be doing today is I'm going to be making some <laughs> butterflies eventually. Um, as you can see, I've cut out some um, little thin sheets of plastic to put on top of my silicon mat, and I've got four of those. And literally, that was just the packaging that came with my baubles. You could do this straight onto a silicon mat if you wanted to, but to be honest, I haven't got one clean enough at the moment to do this with. And uh, I want to make sure that both the top and the bottom are shiny. So that's why I've cut these out. And it's quite a simple process. And they're going to be multicoloured butterflies. No real distinct pattern. But they are going to be um, a little bit multicoloured. So what I've mixed up is I've mixed up four different colours using mica powder. And I've allowed that to um, get quite thick before I start to put it down. And all I'm going to be doing is, as you can see, is making a random pattern on the, um, on the card, like this, okay? And I want it to feel quite a bit of the card, or the plastic but I'm not particularly worried about um, the pattern. And you'll see why at the end. So here we go, here's the red mica powder. You can plop that in there, and I'm gonna fill those lines up now with that. And because it's, I've allowed it thicken up, what it won't do is it won't um, all just merge into one colour unless I put too much on in any particular area. Okay, but what it will do is it will still be thick enough to level out and make the butterflies with at the end. And I've used mica powders because I really, really like the iridescence of the mica powder and as we're going to be using these to make butterflies and you don't have to make butterflies you can make dragonflies you could make bees you can make anything really but i want this to be quite um iridescent when this cures so look i've made a mess all over that one well, that doesn't matter And I love this blue, beautiful colour. So I'm just dobbing that in, as you can see, I'm just really filling those areas that um, I'd left with the, I've got the tremors today. I'm just filling those areas that um, weren't filled by the other colours. Okay. There's that one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over that with a little bit of black. And once again, this black resin has been mixed up just using um, black mica powder and a little bit of uh, resin that has gone quite thick. And I literally am just going to be doing that on it just to give it a bit of an outline. Okay to give it some pattern. And then on the next one, I'm gonna actually make the pattern with the black that I'm going to do. So I've mixed up some green that I'm just going to splodge in the middle 
and again it's just green mica move that about a bit to get that nice micery pattern let that make its own settling so level out nicely I just want to put a bit of pattern in that in that mica there we go and I'll show you how to make some green leaves with this as well so there we go that's that all done so these have been curing now for about 16 hours and I don't want to leave it any longer than 16 hours because I would still need these to be a little bit flexible while I was making these I had a little bit of clear resin left over so I also made some little 3D embellishments <laughs> which um, I've shown how you can do that on a previous video so if you click the link above uh, here you'll see how I do these and these are great in cards as well these little 3d um, resin embellishments the butterflies and the leaves and the cogs and the little sweetie I think he's cute he'll definitely be going on something in a card or something but anyway back to these so what I will do now is I will now emboss a picture on these so, for instance, uh, let's take this one. I will emboss a um, little butterfly on this. Okay. I'm using gold embossing powder. You could use clear. And if you don't have embossing inks or you don't have... Um, anything like that then what you can do is just glue uh, glue on just draw on a um, picture of a butterfly that suits you with a permanent marker and that will work just as well Okay, so the picture is underneath, like that. So it's still quite pretty underneath. Or you can have it up that way as well. And if you want it to dry in a 3D shape, then all I take is a piece of a strip of masking tape, like so I bend it to the shape that I want it to be in so for instance if we want it to be in that shape I put a bit of masking tape on there a bit of masking tape on there and then I'll let that cure in finish curing in that shape which we'll see later and it will stay in that shape so that's the embossing method but now I'm going to show you how I do a um, a draw round method so what I've done is, on this one, I've cut a rough shape out of a butterfly on a piece of paper. I'm going to put it on here to where I think it's best. Okay. And then I'm literally just going to draw around it with a permanent marker. And let that dry on there. without smudging it, if possible. Or moving it, which is what I've just done there, but never mind, I can do that in a second. So let's just remove that. Okay, so we've got a rough shape here of a butterfly. Okay, let that dry for a minute or two. Okay, and then we'll take that off the actual piece of plastic, and it's come off quite well. There we go, because it's not fully cured as yet, remember. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll just, again, cut that out, 
of the um, resin and I'm sure that you'll be able to draw a butterfly much easier and probably a lot better than I have and what you can do is if you've got a nice die cutting uh, thinlet of uh, a butterfly you can actually either draw around that or use it as a stamp to um, to stamp the shape of the butterfly on this curing resin. There we go. So that's now cut out nicely. And again, I will want to um, have that look as if it's uh, in flight. Okay. So I'll use a bit of tape that I've already got cut off here. And again, the great thing about this is it's because you've cleared it, coloured it, or created it on shiny plastic or a shiny mat or something, then um, what will actually happen is the underside will also be uh, shiny as well if you're going to use it in a mould. And I will be doing a video on how I use them in moulds. Okay, so that will do me. So I'll leave that there to uh, cure. And now what I'm going to show you is exactly how I do it with a um, with a leaf using a cutting die. So this is a cutting die and I said I wanted a nice leaf with a bit of pattern. So all I'm going to do is while that is still not cured, I will push that leaf into here. I wouldn't roll it through my um, Sizzix machine because I think it would, firstly it wouldn't go through and secondly it would probably ruin it but I make sure I give it a really good press and that's not going to affect your cutting die at all and this is why I wanted to have a bit of texture in this one so I'm not sure if you can see that there it's got the texture in it and that's another way of using your cutting dies there we go there's that one and if you wanted it to be a little bit more um, in leaf shape or like a dead leaf then all you got to do is move it around like so and I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up I'll put it right close to the lens but it has got that impression in it as well it's all nice and shiny and again I will take that up to uh, keep it into the shape so with this last one, I'm just going to make a flower using the same technique um, of um, pressing down into it of the flower in there now, and I'm going to cut that out. So I've cut that flower out now, and I'm just going to go over it with my Posca pens before I... Um, do anything else with it just to put a middle in it put a few little veins okay and now that's dry I'm just gonna pop a bit of a few yellow Posca pen dots in the middle to break that black up. I love Posca pens. There we go. I will zoom into that. And then, obviously, again, I want this to be um, 3D rather than just flat so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some of the petals and allow them to um, be more three-dimensional 
see what that looks like when that's finished curing in about, I don't know, probably take about 10 hours. These have now been curing for about, I don't know, 40 hours perhaps. So they are completely cured now and they're not gonna move around. And as you can see, they've maintained the shapes. You want to put a few more um, details in them then what I use is a Posca pen. All you have to do is you have to use the mica pen and you can use different colours to do this with if you want to. Okay, so as you can see now that has got some subtle bits on it. And regarding the butterfly, obviously at the moment it's just a bit of a blob of colour. So I will use a black Posca pen here to give it a body. I just think giving it a body really helps distinguish it as a butterfly. Before I put them in a mould, I want to glue them together. So I want to glue the flower to the leaf like that and so I'm just using normal super glue for this and I shall let that cure on the on the leaf for about I don't know a couple of hours before I put it in a cast and I'm also going to use the butterfly on the leaf yeah I think I'll use this butterfly so I'm going to glue this butterfly to this leaf as well. So it looks like it's just about to fly off. So now we've got that all glued together, I can actually put this into a um, cast. That video will be coming very soon, so please hit the notification button and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video as much as you can to help my channel grow. Bye.